Today I'll be showing how to make a cumulative sum function in Power Query, first a simple version and then a more complicated one. I have my basic table here where I want to have the cumulative sum. So in April I want to have 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 in a new column. I'm going to use the list.sum function, but I can't simply use the entire column as my list because I would then sum up the entire list at once. But I can start out by grabbing the list. And since columns in a table are functionally the same as a list, I can create the money list by saying go into the change type table and grab me the money column, which is then my list. And because I'm going to refer to this list many times, I want to wrap it in list buffer. I can then go back to my change type table and say that I want to add an index column to this table. And I want this to start not from zero, but from one, even though lists are index zero based, but this will make sense in a moment. And I want to refer to the change type step. Then I can delete this intermediary step. I should call this list of money. Since I want to use the list sum function, and I don't want to grab the entire list of the money column, in January, I want to grab the first value from the money column. In February, I want to grab the first two that's why I want my index to start at 1. This way, I can use the list first n function in order to effectively filter my list, so I only include the first x amount. And the list I'm then referring to is the list of money step. And then n is my index column. An index then refers to the current row's value in the index column. Now I slice my list, and I can then sum this list using the list sum function conveniently. And this gives me my expected result. Of course, I don't have to create this intermediary column, and I'd rather have all of this happen in one step, which is why I can then add another column, which will be my sum column, where I want to use the list sum function. So I want to combine these two steps into one, and the indentation is nice to me. So what list do I want to sum? I want to list the first n of my money as list, and once again, it's the index column that I use. And this will then do everything in one step, which means instead of referring to added custom one here, I can refer to added index. I can then be fancier and say that maybe I want to filter out rows where the come sum is greater than a certain value. Maybe I want to find out what was the month before I hit a certain threshold. And inversely, what will then be the month after I hit that threshold. Maybe you have a competition saying that you want 60 money. Would you then know that June was the last month before you hit your goal? And I want to do exactly that. And I'll first do it by adding a new column. And then after I'll do it in one step. But I want to use a variable, which is why I can't simply use the custom column helper UI button. I instead want to write it myself. Because I want the user to be able to change the variable. So here I'll say let amount be equal to 60 in this case. And I want to use that variable in the step. And then table add column. I want to add that to add a custom two, and I should definitely have changed the names. My new column is only below, and then I want the value from my variable max amount. And actually, that is a number which we can see with it being green. So I need to convert that into text, and it doesn't give me intelligence, I guess. Intelligence is finicky in Power Query, I found. I need to provide a function because I have to calculate a value for each row, hence each. And then if the value of the sum column, which we can't see because of intelligence, if that is less than or equal to my variable max amount, then I want to output the value itself. Otherwise, I want to write null. And then this is a number. So actually, I can say it should be type number. And I think that, yeah, that can include null. I just want to try if I can, if I'm allowed to do this. Yes, I am. Then I can add the filter to say I want to exclude the nulls. And at this point, if you wanted to get the last row, there are many ways to do that. You could say, I want to extract the last rows. So keep bottom rows one, if you only want the last row before you hit your threshold. If you don't want to have this extra column, of course, you can do what I did here. I'm going to copy it. Instead of adding a new column, I want to instead directly work on the sum column using this table select rows, because I don't actually have to calculate a new column in order to add a filter. If I write everything right, then the output of this step is going to be identical to the previous row. Again, I want to have a variable called max amount and table select rows. The table I'm acting upon is added custom two, I believe. Yeah, once again, it's a good, good habit to change the names of the steps immediately. What is the condition that is the function I'm applying? So for each row where this function evaluates the true, I want to keep it. And I want to keep the row if the value in the sum column 
is less than or equal to my max amount variable. So these are now identical, the two steps, with the exception that here I needed to add an extra column. As you can see, it's pointless when you have such simple logic. I have a bit of a waste. I'm calculating the cumulative sum for values that exceed my threshold, which is pointless. Because let's say I had 20,000 rows and I hit my threshold after 13,000, then there's no point in continuing the calculation. Because the downside of the cumulative sum function with the way I've done it is that it gets increasingly more expensive the more rows you have. Because you need to sum all of the preceding values, which uh, ends up being a lot of values. So I want to terminate my calculation once I hit my threshold. Before I go further, I want to explain the downside of this function. In each row of my table, I'm going to do the same calculation over and over again. In the third row, I want to add the first, second and third value. But there's no actual point in doing this because I've already calculated the sum of the first two steps in the second row. Which means all I actually have to do is to grab the value in the preceding row and then add the current value of this row. I can take the sum of this row, which is 15, and then add the value in the money column. That's what I want to do, but I can't do that inside Power Query. It would be trivial to do with VBA because I can just say, well, grab the value of the preceding row and add the current row's value and keep looping. Instead, what I want to do is to take the entire column. I want to calculate my cumulative sum and then I want to stop calculating this list once I hit my threshold. That way, instead of doing the calculation inside my table, I'm actually instead doing a lookup operation where I want to say in my first row of my table, I want to extract the first value in my list. In the second row of my table, grab the second and so on. And then I'll simply terminate once I hit the end of my list. The first three steps of this query are the same. I then have to use the list generate function. I want to create a new list that takes this value and then does the cumulative sum. I still want to start out with my variable so that the user can go and change the threshold. Optionally, you could turn this into a step or a parameter. I choose to keep it inside the function, which uh, we can discuss whether that's good architecture. I still want it to be 60 for no actual reason. My function is then list generate. My initial is a function, so I want to pass in an empty function with no arguments, which goes towards the value of one. Because I know in my first iteration, I want to grab the first value and I'll still be using list sum and list first n. I should actually comment this code because it's going to get overwhelming quickly. My condition, in other words, I should keep looping until I hit this because list generate is a do while loop or each iteration. I want to use the list sum function, but I don't want to sum an entire list. I want to sum only a portion of the list. And that was money as a list. And my count or condition is then the underscore. Because here, underscore refers to the iteration. This is where it gets trippy. In the first iteration, underscore is 1. After this iteration, I'm going to increase the value of underscore by 1. So it's going to be 2 and then 3 and so on. In other words, in my first iteration, I want to grab the first value. In my second iteration, I grab the second value. And so on. And I'm going to find out if I can keep track of my parentheses. Because it's a bit difficult when I can't drag down the formula bar so I get more room. But this should be the sum, this portion, and then I can say as long as this is less than or equal to my variable max amount, then I want to keep going. And the next value is then going to be each. And I want the underscore to be equal to itself plus one. And the best way I can explain what's going on here, is there's an implied underscore equals. So I'm saying the next value of underscore should be equal to underscore its current value plus one, which tripped me up in the beginning. The value I want to output is not the underscore, which is what would happen if I did this. I would get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which means on the seventh iteration, my sum is greater than max amount, which we can see here because I have six rows. So that's as expected. But I don't want to output the underscore, which is why I need a second row, which is the selector as nullable function, which is then what is the value I want to print in my list. But the value I want to print is actually the calculation I do up here, which is a bit silly. So I'm going to copy that. If I did everything right, then I can do this. And I did. That's wonderful. So now instead of printing underscore, I print the value of my calculation that I wanted to do. And like I said at the beginning, this is now a lookup instead of doing the calculation for each row. 
I don't know how M works behind the scenes, how this calculation works. I assume it still has to do the entire operation, that is grab all of the values of my list and then do a slicer and then do the sum. So it's not like VBA where I can calculate the value for each row and then simply add a new value to it. I think here in the sixth row, it does have to grab all the six items and calculate it. So I don't think it's that smart. In any case, this is my list with my cumulative sum. And I can now use this as my filter condition because I want to filter my table first before I add the new column with the cumulative sum. So I know I want to act on the change type step, which I should rename. I want to grab the first rows of my table because I can count the number of items in this list and use that as my filter condition. I want to grab the first rows of my table change type and my count is then list count of the list comsum step, which is also exactly as I expect. And then to do my lookup operation, I need a index column where I need to start from one. And I then want to do my lookup operation, which is then the list in the index position is then the index column. And I guess I do need to start from zero. Actually, I was confused why in my notes, I said I started from one when lists are index zero based. In my notes, I did things a bit differently because I created a function which would do my cumulative sum. I don't need the index column anymore and I can delete that. And actually, I want to add the type here because I hate that it says uh, that type any here. And I do know that the value is actually a number because, because the number is written in italics and on the right side. In my notes, I can see that I played around with local functions, which I guess you could also call a lambda function which is where I define the function inside of the step that I use it. So something like this, which is then the same function as when I created my cumulative sum, which is then money as a list and then my variable. And then you can use the function for whatever. Alternatively, you can put it in its own step or you can add it as an actual proper function. But instead, I'll keep it simple and stop here and I'll go through these different methods to create functions in another video. So, yep.